Hey, I'm Adam Cook. Welcome to the Bite Britain podcast, a show dedicated to interviewing the most successful restaurant owners in the UK, learning about what goes into their incredible menus, but more importantly, what it takes to run the successful restaurant in this day and age. Grove and the Fish Bar is Norwich's staple fish and chip shop. Being around for over 90 years, it's safe to say that they have a bit of a reputation that has grown way beyond the locals of Norwich. Since taking a leap into a big refurbishment, they have taken this amazing business into the modern era, serving up a selection of funky wraps, awesome sandwiches and burgers, as well as the usual fish and chips that made them famous in the first place. What I love about this place is the fact that the management have really taken note of modern trends and have had the courage to incorporate them into a very traditional English food business. The courage has clearly paid off, as well as their feature on the one show on the BBC, they regularly have queues out the door and have built a whole new market for themselves that spreads across all generations. Today, I talked to Dwayne, one half of the duo behind this awesome restaurant. So let's get to it. I'd like to welcome today to the podcast, um, Dwayne, um, one of two people that are responsible for the awesome fish bar known as Grosvenor Fish Bar over in Norwich. And Grosvenor Fish Bar is a very interesting concept in that it doesn't necessarily take the traditional route that many fish and chip shops in the UK take. Um, so Dwayne, welcome to the podcast. Um, I'd just like to start just by asking you a little bit about you personally and then just tell us a little bit more about the restaurant. Um, well, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, and then um, moved to New York City. And there in New York, I was in the marketing and advertising business, which sort of helped me with this. And, um, but after doing it for 25 years, I was really burnt out and ha- didn't want to do anything with that. So I knew Christian in New York. Um, Christian was from Norwich, so I wanted to take some time off and um, travel. So. We were going to Europe and we came to Norwich. I had never even heard of Norwich before and I loved it. I I didn't know where we were going. And um, the city was beautiful. The people here are amazing, really nice people. Um, And his parents owned this chip shop. It was in disrepair, but you can just see, I mean, people were still coming to it, you know? It was just like, you know, in America, well, we don't... That's, that's the Brits. We love fish and chips. <laughs> I know, but it's just like we don't have... In America, we don't have a national food. You know, what is it? McDonald's? You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like... <Yeah, maybe. laughs> so, I mean, here, people just like, you know... I mean, Friday nights, it's incredible. You know, we're, we have queue down the street. And, you know, people... Also, people here don't mind queuing up. You know, it's not that you'd love to do it. Sometimes. <laughs> we no, no, no. It's really fashion, that's for sure. <laughs> no, but it's, it's not that you love it so much, but it's just that you made the decision to do it. But in America, they make the decision to do it, and then they get angry that they're in this queue. <laughs> and, yeah. and they have guns. They have guns. So you have... <laughs> oh, we don't... Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so I think one thing that... Um, anyway, so I told... Um, the, pa- the parents were trying to sell the shop. And so I said, if you, I love this. If you don't sell it, by the time I had to sell my apartment in New York, in order to buy it. And I had to talk Christian into it because Christian didn't want to come back to where he grew up. You know, it's like he was in New York, he had a career there. Um, he was in interior design. And uh, so, but finally I played on his heartstrings with his mom and dad, like, you know, they're getting on in years. And so, you know, you don't want to miss their best years. <laughs> he fell for it. Yeah. You were the one that planted the seed then by the side of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, to me, I would just had, I mean, I, I don't know, I was being pretty selfish, I think, because I was desperate to get out of what I was doing. You know, I was just so yeah. bored with what I was doing. I love New York, but I just wanted to change. And then coming to um, Norwich, such a small place, it was so refreshing. The people are amazing. We, there's mm. two universities here. There's an art university and there's a... Yeah, yeah. I've got family from Norwich. It's a lovely place. Really oh, nice. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so finally he got on board with it. And um, when he got back, he goes, I forgot how nice Norwich is. You know? <laughs> I mean, he ran the shop when he was 14. So it was a little bit hard for him to, like, oh, you know, going back into fish and chips. Sure. Yeah. So what was the inspiration behind sort of behind the, the behind starting it? What kind of inspired you? What made you think, well, I, this is something I really want to want to do? What, what kind of... Did you ever see that movie, My Beautiful Laundrette? 
Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, okay. Maybe I need to. Oh, Daniel Day Lewis, when he was, you know, probably one of his first movies. But anyway, um, I just at, at these, I, I just wanted to take over this place, and it it had people coming to it, and I just wanted to modernize it and just make it part of the community, you know. And it was already part of the community, but I just wanted to, you know, kind of all I really had to do was polish it up, you know. Sure, sure. And it's a funny, it's a funny one, isn't it? With with certainly with with fish and chips and stuff in the UK, it's certainly not. It, although it's one of the most long-standing takeaways, as we would call it, it's not necessarily the most the most popular. So um, it's kind of kind of a risky thing, like um, moving into that. I mean, how, how did you, was you sort of was you nervous when you started started this out? No, I, I figured because um, his parents were already making money, so okay. I know with Christian that we'd at least keep it there. But mm. I had all these aspirations and goals, and thinking, oh, it'd be so nice if this and this, and. I didn't really expect them to come to happen, but they did, you know what I mean? And that's because, I mean, Christian's amazing at what he does, you know? Um, I, I don't cook or anything, but um, I, I come up with things like recipes and stuff like that. Yeah. I never, I tried frying, because I thought like, how difficult is it to fry? You batter it and you throw it in the oil, it turns brown, you take it out. <laughs> Until I took out a thick piece of cod and it was raw in the middle, so no. Okay, so, so you easily moved away from that. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in the front. <laughs> So, I mean, just on the subject of food then, I mean, because your menu is just looks incredible. When I look at your menu, it, you know, I've, I've never seen a fish and chip shop in the UK with, with a menu like that. You know, a lot of fish and chip shops don't really take any, any risks. They don't, they, they you know, it's standard fare, um, you know, the stuff they know everyone wants, you know, the, the battered cod, the battered sausage, the pies, the chips. Um, so where, where does all this inspiration come from for, for the food? Like what, and, and you know, what, what made you, Sort of get that courage to, to take those risks because it's quite a risky thing to play around with a traditional dish like like fish and chips you know and uh, it's, it's, it obviously works really well but i'm just wondering sort of just just sort of kind of rewinding back where, where did the inspiration where did the idea for this actually come from i think everything came from like what we would want personally going into a place and so we wanted to keep it traditional with okay you can come in here and you can get battered cod chips we have mushy peas but we switch, yeah. we, we, we just mix things up like, you know, the mushy peas have um, seasoning in them. So they're a little bit spicy and stuff like that. Okay. So just kind of things to keep, almost like to keep us interested maybe, but things that we would want. That's, a, that's a, you mean, really, just, you're, you're your own ideal customer in a way. Yeah, right? exactly. It's just like, yeah. I, I feel like if I just treat everybody how I wanted to be treated, you know, that's pretty much yeah. all I thought about, you know? So I think we, we couldn't, I thought you really can't lose if you're giving them what they want. And then you just add things on extra, you know what I mean? So they can yeah. still have the traditional stuff. The, the classic but, stuff, yeah. But then if they wanted a steamed taco with fish, with cod in it, you know, then they could have that, you know? And It's a funny one, really, with fish and chips, because, you know, I can, pretty much every cuisine I can think of um, has always been played around with to some extent by restaurants and stuff like that. But fish and chips just seem to be one of those things, for some reason, People just leave it alone. They they just leave it as it is. No one's really. I've never seen anywhere. I'm I'm sure there might be another few places around the UK uh, uh, that I've not discovered. But it's very very rare that you see anyone that's had the guts to kind of just get take take that traditional menu and say actually we think we can do this a little bit differently and, and we think we can we can make make something of this and it, which is exactly what you've done. I mean, you you came onto our radar um, when we were looking for for guests on the show because of your online reputation. I've seen you you guys have been featured on on the one show in the past as well. Um, so I mean, what 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 is it actually? What, what's it actually taken for you guys? Because obviously you had a reputation coming into this, right? So it was already a, had a had a reputation. But what? Tell us more about sort of how you've maintained that reputation. But not only maintained it, but actually grown it as well. Because it seems to me like you're now attracting as well as all the original people that I guess loved the fish and chip bar as it was, you've, it seems to me that you've brought on a whole new part section of the market, really opened up a whole new section of the market, you know, younger people that perhaps traditionally didn't necessarily go and buy fish and chips seem to be, you know, from the evidence that I can see on your Facebook page and things like that, it seems to be interesting. Tell us a little bit more about how you've managed to sort of not just maintain the, the reputation that you've got, but kind of build up, a, I guess, a new reputation in the area as well. Well, it's exactly what you said, that um, the customers were older that um, Christian's parents had. Mm. And um, so just by adding these things, changing the menu around a little bit, it, 
it, I mean, the whole business has grown organically and it's just, we've made mistakes. We've, you know, tried things and th things haven't worked. And then we tried other things and it worked. And so we just kind of wrote it out and then things would just build upon that. We have a pub across the way. Um, and so our food, they let our food go over there as long as the people buy drinks. So it's kind of like we have a liquor that's license amazing. that we don't have, you know? Yeah, that's, that is, I saw that on your website and I was like, wow, that is, that is genius. That's I mean, it's great because who wants that? Whose idea was that? Um, I think that was theirs because people kept yeah. coming in, people kept coming in with it. You know, we would never send people over there. So I think people were trying to sneak it in there. So then they, <laughs> yeah. and then they, they said they were, um, they were going to do, they were doing a refurb and they were getting rid of their kitchen and they were going to put a wine bar back there. And so they said, listen, you know, your fish and chips could come in here as long as people get drinks. So then, so then we promoted that. And that just took off because who wants to wait inside a hot fish and chip shop for their fish and chips? Yeah, I have know? to say that I saw that on your website when I was uh, doing a little bit of research on, on you guys uh, previously. And I was like, wow, that is, that is a great move. <laughs> people don't, a lot of people don't even know it. Um, is we have like 75 seats downstairs. You would never know it. Like you just, it looks like a, ch a chip shop, you know, yeah. and you have a queue goes out the door or whatever. And then, but downstairs there's 75 seats down there. So. So do you have do you, do you have a lot of do you have more do you do sort of more takeaway stuff or do you have a lot more eating customers? I mean, how how? Um, I'd say it's about fifty fifty. It really right. is, yeah. And it's still kind of like you know people come and they sit down and we do have waiters that bring down the food, but you still have to wait in the queue, put your order in, then go sit down, and then we'll bring it, we bring it down to you. Mm -hmm. But um, but it kind of turns over quickly. It's not like you know long leisurely meal where you know they sit around. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, very. Good. You know, that's what fish and chip shops are all about, right? Is yeah, yeah. get your get your food, eat it in there, take it home. You know, it's but, very. It's funny because we do we do have parties and people um, we do like do Christmas parties and we do events and people go down there and they'll be there for like three or four hours. You know, they booked up for that, but um, but in general, it's pretty much a quick turnover. It's just good place. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So I'm interested just to dig a little bit before we sort of get into a few more sort of business, the business side of things. I want to dig in a little bit more on, on your, your food, um, which I'm sure most people are going to all be interested in. Um, now I want to ask you about popular menu items. Now I, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to hazard a guess that the classic dishes are still pretty popular. Exactly. Put it, putting those to one side, you know, because I'm interested in some of these, sort of new dishes that you've brought to yeah. the table. What is your most popular, can we say, un untraditional <laughs> dish at the moment? And, and why do you think that is? Um, our most, our mo uh, most popular um, ones are, we have uh, this wrap, which is called the basswood sass, and it's a sea bass fillet, and it goes on a bed of lettuce with a homemade mango salsa, and it just gets wrapped up. And that is really one of the most popular things on the menu. Um, another thing, which is uh, not a lot of places, um, I find all the fish sort of, it's like nice, white, mild fish, most places, but we have mackerel and we have um, red herring as well. Yeah, I saw so, mackerel actually, that's interesting. So is that, do you batter that? We batter the mackerel oh. and um, you could just have it as a little piece of fish. It's not that big, but then we also put it in a sandwich. Um, yeah. And it, we call it a Big Mac. We thought we would get publicity by getting sued, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see you sneak the K on the end there. So you probably did. yeah, we did. Yeah. So maybe that's what's saving us. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah. I mean, that's I don't. Really I, don't popular. I, I don't think. Uh, I don't think McDonald's have uh, have got too much to worry about when it comes to to fresh food being in competition. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think if someone wants fresh food, they're not going to be going to McDonald's. Yeah. Um, but what I what I did also notice as well was there was was it a B, your BBLT. Yeah, that's that sounds um, interesting. Tell me a bit about well, that. It's very American to have, um, you know, a BLT, bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. So is this so, your American influence? Coming yeah. Out? So I, I said, <laughs> let's let's resource and get some really good bacon. Let's batter it and just test it out and see how it is. So we first tested it. We just battered it and we gave it to some of our you know regulars and said, you like this because it's it's really nice bacon from a local butcher and it's um, cured with um, treacle and with beer. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And then, so those are battered. <laughs> it's good enough as it is, but. I know, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. You can't really go wrong. No. So, um, 
So everything else that's in the sandwich is just there so you can have the bacon. But um, so everybody loved the battered bacon. So then um, we tried it in a BLT and it's been going, it goes really, really well. It's, you know, it's just your regular BLT, um, but it's just, the battered bacon comes out and it's just like a nice big thing like that. I mean, yeah, I, I need to, I need to come and try this really. I mean, if, I mean, if you're for anyone to do the taste testing, you need all right, yeah, well, available, you know. I, all I, right, I come on in. waiting for you, okay? Come on in. Come <laughs> in. Um, anytime, anytime you want. Yeah, if you're coming down through, if you're going to come visit your family or whatever, just come in, oh, yeah. let us know, set it up. I'll make sure that I make a beeline now for, for yeah. the next opportunity. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no, no, it'll be good. Um, um, so but then people started putting that in their burgers and in their other sandwiches and stuff. So now he's got like bacon is added, battered bacon is added onto other things as well. So you do, you, quite, people do like to kind of pick a mix because there's so many interesting things in that menu. That's, that's my fear. If I walked in, I'd, I, it would take me an hour to decide what I was going to order, actually. <laughs> well, we have this new thing. We have this new thing where um, we were in Amsterdam. And we're, it was a friend's birthday party. We were sitting and we saw all these um, high teas going, you know, and, and they all stacked up and everyone goes, oh, that looks amazing. So we ordered them. They go, oh, you have to order that two days in advance. I'm like, really? You know, we're on vacation. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we go, we, we, everyone, we just start talking and go, you know what? We should do that. You can come into our shop and you can have a high tea anytime. But, you know, but we ended up being like, oh, it's called a high C. And so there's three tiers. And so on top of it, play, play on names that you do. I think it's great. It's yeah. really I know it's a little, it's very corny, but it makes us laugh. Uh, but then yeah, it, it keeps us, and like I said, it's to entertain us as well. Yeah. yeah. But um, with the high C, you get these little mini um, clam sliders, which that was a recipe from my mom. My mom, like um, when we were having a fancy dinner and people were coming over for the hors d'oeuvres <laughs> or something before, she'd make these like um, clam balls. So I just took it in and made it a clam burger where you just saute like clams and butter and garlic. And then you add breadcrumbs and then um, we batter it and we fry it. And um, that, that's the newest thing that's taken off. I mean, like, I, I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I would go into a chip shop and order I'm something sure. with clams. I think it's just, just I think for me personally, when I, when I see someone who's breaking the tradition and I see something new that I've never seen before, being a sort of a foodie myself, I just want to try it. So I think, yeah. I think that's the thing you're, you're, I wouldn't say, you know, it's not like you're shocking people, but you're, you're making people look twice. I think with that mm -hmm. stuff. And I think that's, that's really, you know, where restaurants shine is when they, when they take those risks and they're prepared. Cause I'm sure, I guess, I guess you've had a lot of menu items that you've probably tried or things you've thought of that yeah. maybe haven't worked as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's about taking those risks so that you can find, you know, those little gems that, that people love. Yeah. And I think, I think that's really, really important. Um, so I just want to get into a little bit more about, you know, obviously, obviously you've got a, a very successful business. You've done really well in bringing sort of new, new audience or new sort of demographics back to fish and chips or, or not in necessarily the traditional sense, but back into the, the premises. What what do you think is the biggest sort of factor decision that you've made sort of over the course of of, of your time um, involved in involved in the business that has kind of contributed to your your current success? Is there sort of a moment you can not necessarily a moment? Maybe it's maybe it's a decision. Maybe it's a moment just where where you look back and you think, I'm glad that we did that, or I'm glad we made that call, even though it was a bit of a scary one. Or is there anything that kind of jumps to to your mind? You know, um, I really didn't have to deal with the public too much in my, uh, my past job. So I tell you, I think that's what um, made the biggest difference to our business was just having us out there and we greet the people and I go through the queue and I ask people, I ask people what they want. So I'm yelling it over, you know, over to right, so you are truly hands on really on the business on the floor. Yeah. On the so I mean, floor, like, you know? we'll have a queue out the door and I'm yelling out orders so that by the time people get to the um, to the till, you know, it's probably ready because we don't have fish. Just sit. that's another thing. We don't just fry a bunch of stuff and wait till it sells. You know, we. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't mention that. And when we were talking about the food, actually, so I'm guessing all of your ingredients are kind of fresh. Yeah, I mean, Christian's amazing at yeah. really resourcing and he does, he, and that's what helps us like, you know, finding new things. Like um, we have cod cheeks um, on the menu. Yeah. <laughs> they, they must be very small, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, they almost, they almost, um, oh, kind of like a mountain oyster maybe. 
Oh, wow, okay. I didn't I realize mean, quads had, quads had such big cheeks. <laughs> actually, um, they're, they're pretty big and um, they're various sizes, but um, um, tastes just like cod, but it's, um, it has a texture more of like a scallop. So it's okay. really, yeah, it really is nice. That sounds like and, something that probably gets thrown away most of the time, right? See, that's what happened. This is what, um, you have people coming in like in their 80s and, or 70s and 80s and they're telling us, my mom used to buy those by the buckets for like 10p because that was just like the fish heads they were throwing away yeah, and then yeah. so so this was all refuse now we're talked into it oh it's it's a gourmet item so we're paying more for it price but, goes up, right yeah <laughs> but it is amazing it is so it is good you know but it's not it's not rejected it's not expensive i mean still you get um i don't know i think it's about six pounds or something and you get like six to eight pieces or like little individual dumplings battered and fried and then um you get chips with that so it's not that expensive okay, next next time I'm, i go and visit the fishmonger i'm gonna have to uh have to ask yeah you i get some cod chicks they're really nice yeah and then you could even just saute them up and stuff you could treat them like a scallop as well yeah awesome so so just to go back to the question we were, we were on there before i took you off on that tangent um so the really it's about about the being and dealing with with the public you were saying so so make that decision to be to 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 sort of own that and not try and hand it off to another member of staff, actually, you know, firsthand get on that floor and, and you know, greet the people, take the orders and doing, doing all of that stuff was, was really an important decision, you, you say, really. And, and that, again, was one of the things that happened organically because, you know, by just working with the customers mm. and then talking to them, um, I, they would tell me these things. So you're constantly getting feedback and you know what's happening with your business. Important. Yeah, so important. And it's just like, you know, if something's not working or if somebody had, I mean, somebody had a bad experience, you know, I want to know about it, you know, so I could fix that. And yeah, I think there's a lot of restaurant, restaurant owners that, that hide from that. You know, they hide out the back. Maybe they're, maybe they're the, the head chef or maybe, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just the owner um, that hide away um, in, the, in the back office. And, you know, the, 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 the front of house staff are all dealing with the customers. But that feedback loop's not always there. Um, and I think, you know, the difference that must make, you know, being, being both the, the sort of the, the partner in the business and actually directly dealing with people, you know, you're going to firsthand know before anyone if, if something's wrong in the business and if something is changing or, if so, you know, conversely, if something's really good. Um, I, think, I think that's a really important factor that, you know, a lot of anyone that's probably thinking out there that perhaps start in a restaurant, you know, it's really important to have a link into that feedback when you're when you're running a, a, a business with with direct customer interaction like that because it's so easy for those that feedback i think in a lot of cases to just fall through the net and not actually get back yeah. to the person who's making the decision so, so I think many people that's... people pay for that kind of information you know what i mean and then you get it right yeah. there you know and i tell you it's really and we can never take for granted um oh we do a great job you, you just we make mistakes you know and so you have to know what your mistakes were and you have to just own up to it and you just like fix them so yeah. people appreciate that you know when you admit it and you take care of them and you know i have to say i don't know this is the only place i've lived in the uk but the people here are loyal too i mean honestly i mean oh, yeah now when you have your like your 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 local restaurant that you go to or your local fish and chip shop um yeah yeah we we brits do like uh you like routine <laughs> yeah so if it's if it's like if i screw up something and it's like i'm really embarrassed you know it's like if i, if I you know gave something horrible to my family or something you know so, uh, <laughs> yeah no sure it's taking it very personally by the sound of it as well making sure that you know what, what's actually happening on on in the restaurant is, is taken personally i think that's really really important you know so so many times i've personally been into to restaurants and you know maybe there's been a problem or you know maybe i've just made a suggestion you you always leave thinking I wonder if anyone will actually end up hearing that and pro probably most of the time they don't and i think you know one of the easiest ways to solve that without having to spend loads of money getting the professionals in is just be be present be there yeah <laughs> you know make sure someone is, is available yeah i think that's that's really really important um so what what would you say has been the biggest challenge um in in setting up growing the fish bar and managing it what's what's what you know is there something that you feel has really, really kind of taken you to the to the edge. Um, I tell you, um, there is one thing that's really, really hard, and that is um, staffing. 
That's the, that's the thing that I really um, struggle with. It seems like everything else is, pre- uh, the things that you think would be hard yeah. are sort of easy. And then the thing that you think is just no problem, but it's like- People management. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, we have like um, really nice people working here, great people, but mm. people get sick. You know, people go on vacation and things, you know, it's like, it's always trying to, you know, you think you have everything all set up and then it just all goes to hell. And so you just got to jump in there when you can. But I think that's the hardest thing is like um, Brexit really hasn't, um, nobody really knows what's happening with Brexit. Don't, but we, don't say that word, don't swear. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Really, it is a bad word. And I won't say the, I won't say the other swear word, Trump, but um, <laughs> um um, we've lost really amazing people because um, they were afraid of what's going to happen with Brexit. So they went back to their countries, you know, just afraid. Uh, yeah. Um, even though I tried to tell them, look, if you're here, you're here, you're safe, you know, but so. It, 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 that's, people, that's, I've never heard any, anyone mention that. That is, uh, so yeah, that is obviously really, really uh, crazy thing to happen. I, I think there's a lot of misinformation that goes around. Yeah, because, yeah, like, well, look, people who really are in the know don't even know. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, the politicians who are supposed to be organising don't know what don't know what's going on. So I yeah. suppose that's the scary thing, though, isn't it? It's the unknown, yeah. it's really unknown. So I, I think constantly keeping um, on top of the staff and restaffing is, is probably the biggest issue. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's come up. It's funny because that is the one thing that in all the interviews that we've done so far, or the really interviews I've done so far, that's the one thing that comes up over and over again in one one way or another. It's about have. Not, not just managing staff, but hiring the right people as well and making sure that you, you actually hire the right people that you can trust to do the job. I mean, is, is that kind of where you're going with this? It's like not just managing people's schedules, but actually making sure the people that you've got in the business are appropriate um, and can be trusted as well. Yeah, because... Um my way of thinking was just to hire nice people because you can teach somebody to run a till, you can teach somebody to bring the food down, whatever, but mm. it's just hard to teach somebody. My biggest, um, the most important thing to me is that people are treated, you know, how I want to be treated, you know, just people are taken care of. And so, and could kind of, you know, you want people around who can, you know, can see in the, oh, they're going to need this and they're going to need that. So people not just like, here, here's this, but oh, here, you might need this, you might want that, you know? People just taking care of you, you know? Yeah. Um, so you think you have it and you hire somebody and then it's just kind of not working out. But then um, I have never fired anybody in seven years. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Um, but um, it's just like, you know, you just could try to help them along and just say, look, it's better if you do this, this, this. And eventually, if it's just not in them, it makes them uncomfortable. And then usually they end up leaving. But, um. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I think that, that, as I can say, that is such an important thing. I mean, you know, you have to, you have to hire staff if you want to grow a business and scale a business beyond, you know, you, obviously. Um, but that, those decisions in who you hire are just, just so, so important. And I think that can make or break restaurant or business to be honest yeah. um and i mean obviously the fact that you've not had to fire anyone i mean that's obviously credit to your to your hiring process as well um tell me a little bit about that is that is it, do you have a very kind of strict process when you're hiring people i mean are you looking for certain qualities and stuff yeah. in people um it, we've had it across the board um christian's mom still works here and she's 73 oh, wow. <laughs> so and I like having it just, you know, a bit of everything, you know what I mean? Everybody, you know, just whoever comes in, if they're right, they're nice, you know, they smile and they probably are going to get a job. And all we do is um, we don't, we have a trial, like a three, three hour, you know, trial and have people come in so they can see if they like us or we like them. Okay. And, yeah. That's a good idea. And then if they come back and then if we like them, then we'll say, look, you know, um, come in for a paid day. And we'll just give you a full schedule and then just see how you get on and then that's how we do it and if they get on Great. that's good yeah i think that's 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 not how a lot of people tend to hire in the restaurant business as far as i'm aware um you know a lot of the time it's like classic oh you got the job congratulations you're in i think that's a good i mean that that probably explains why you've not had to fire anyone because you're doing it in that in that stage it, way i think that's very well i think if they haven't worked here worked at least a full day 
you know, they're not going to see everything, but they'll just see how hectic it's going to be, how crazy <laughs> it's going to be, you know, how, how to deal with the customers and stuff like that. So they, they might, I mean, I had, um, I made a big mistake and I had this new girls come in and I, um, her first day I had her, it was a Saturday and it's just like, you know, there's a queue out the door, you know what I mean? And she was like a deer in headlights and she goes, she goes, she goes, I'm sorry, I have to leave. And she just ran. She just left. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it's good. I mean, she knew she couldn't handle that. You know what I mean? And that's so she got to taste, you know, I mean, that was like yeah, that. I mean, well, some people thrive in those environments and others don't. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's who you want. That's who you want. That pro that's that's a, that's the process in action working. You know, you've had someone they've come in for a trial. They have decided they don't like it. They've left, you know, yeah. much easier way of managing things than getting someone in, finding out a week down the line they hate the job and then they don't turn up on a Saturday one day when you're really yeah. Yeah. then that's going to be a disaster so i think that's that's another great really good learning point thanks for sharing that i think that's a really really good um point that you're making there about you know when you're hiring staff make give them give them a trial you know make them uh, make them see if they like it because they'll if if they're uh if they're just starting out you know i'm pretty sure most people leave their leave their jobs very early on <laughs> when they start something new if they don't like it you know um, and you'd write it's much better to do that you know from a by running some kind of a trial like that, I think, than to do it on, you know, on your, on the, on when they're on a wage and they've come in and they've been working there for you and then so all of a sudden they let you down or something like that, because that's going to be disastrous, especially if you, like I said, on a Saturday or something along those lines. Um, what, what sort of, I want to talk a little bit about habits because, you know, all business owners have, have habits that serve them and don't serve them. Um, I can certainly talk a lot about habits that, that certainly don't serve me. Um, but I want to talk about habits that contribute to success. I think that daily habits are one of the single things that will make or break someone as a business owner. So what are some of the sort of daily habits that you, Christian, or maybe habits that you employ in your workforce, what are some of those habits um, that contribute to the success that you've got? I think um, one of the things um i'm not sure if it's a habit but it's i always have to be um a pleaser you know what i mean i want you to leave with a smile on your face like i want you to be happy when you leave here even if even if something was wrong even if you got the wrong order i want us to have taken care of that in the right way so that negative turns into a positive so that's one of the things but i mean i was like that ever since I was a kid, I think, because we were like nine kids. And was, I think, I think maybe it might have been sort of like growing, somebody told me once, it's probably because you were in a big family and you didn't want to kind of like rock the boat or something. But, okay. it's, but I think it's something learned from my mom. Like when my mom would have, um, people would come in unannounced, like guests would come in, she would just bring out food. She would never ask people if they wanted anything because she said, if you ask anybody if they want something, you're kind of like making it like you don't want to do it. You know what I mean? She goes, just bring it out and let them have the choice. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think, I think I learned it from her. And I think that it's in that, I think the employees pick up on that and they know how important that is. And that is sort of like what people expect when they come here, not only the food, but yeah. I think they expect to be treated fairly. You know? So how about, you know, when you're, if you've had like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're in a bad mood, you've had a bad, bad morning or a bad day. I mean, how, how do you, how do you bring that, that, that friendliness out, even when it's not necessarily there? Is that just something that comes naturally to you or is it something you, you know, how, how do you sort of give yourself that energy? Well, to tell you the truth, um, to be fair, I, this, this is past um, year, we, we started another little biz, um, just, uh, we have an Airbnb. Okay. And, and so, and it's right next door to the shop. And um, so I've been taking care of that and doing that. So I've been in, in, the, in the shop less. Okay. And then I saw things like, you know, things were, you know, falling through the cracks, you know? And so, but I still would do that. And I was getting a little bit lazier because I had such good staff, you know? I was getting lazier. <laughs> and, and I did see that things were running through the cracks. So I had to bring myself to go back down and I go downstairs and it just all of a sudden when I go downstairs and I'm in the shop I'm so happy you know dealing with the people and just being in that element and like looking at somebody and just like oh you know she's in a wheelchair and she's outside eating her chips um doesn't she know that you know 
telling her that there is a seating area right over here that, you know, has one little step that I can get right. her in, you know what I mean? Okay. Just like being aware of that, you know, it just makes yeah. me happy to have, to be able to do that. You know? I think for me, what, what, what I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, you know, back, going back to my question I asked then is because, because, you know, sometimes in certainly, you know, when in my work, my, my business and stuff, I have days when I've, I've got a bad day, but the way that I get through it is I'm very, Kind of passionate about what I'm doing I think that's what what you're kind of alluding to there is that actually this is kind of you know you and Christian's little you know business that you've kind of started and grown you know from the traditional fish and chip shops what it is and I think doing something that you're proud of um, and enjoy as well so clearly this is something you enjoy and I think that make that is actually the thing that perhaps makes your day better when you've had a bad day so you walk through into work and all of a sudden you're not, it's not like, oh, I'm walking into the office. Oh, no. It's like, you know, this is something that you are truly passionate about. This is something that you truly are interested in. You know, the food industry, uh, you know, this disruption of the fish and chip market, <laughs> if you like. And, and so, so that, that passion, you know, makes it very easy for you to be this friendly, customer-facing person because you genuinely care. I, I do. And I have to say, and like I said, I go down there. And maybe I, maybe I don't want, maybe I'm just kind of being lazy, but then I finally get down there when I get down there. I mean, my commute is a flight of stairs. I live above it. <laughs> and I'm still late every day. Okay. <laughs> but um, I get down there and I'm happy. I really, it does, it, it gives, I feed off of it and it gives me energy. I think that's a really important thing because so many people go into business for, you know, what I would really consider the wrong reasons, you know, to get rich. To, to make make loads of money you know to perhaps you know fulfill someone else's legacy perhaps or you know all the wrong these these wrong reasons but I think what at the core you know if you certainly with with a restaurant and you know everyone always says you know restaurants are one of the toughest businesses to be in that really important thing I think personally is you've got to be passionate about what it is you're doing you know you can't just go into it thinking I want a restaurant because I, I know that some restaurant owners you know, do really well and have, you know, nice cars, etc. You know, it's got to be something you genuinely care about, you know, not just the customers, but the food, the whole thing. It really needs to be a, a, a labor of, of true passion, I think. And I think if you if you do that, you know, whether it's a restaurant or whatever business it is that you run, if you do something you're genuinely passionate about, which is a cliche, I know, but I, th I think that's going to be the, you know, when you've got those bad days, you've had a bad day, last and you know the last thing you want to do is get out of bed you know the, the act of going in and working on a business that you're genuinely passionate about and that you're proud of and care about is actually going to be the thing that actually puts you back in that good mood and it is. brings you back down to earth and I think that's really important and so many people look at running a business as work something that and when you say work it's like kind of considered a negative thing something you don't want to do exactly uh, and I, th I think it's really important if you can build something that you're not just proud of but something you actually care about then work isn't necessarily work it's just part of your life you know something that actually makes you happy almost like a hobby yeah exactly and you enjoy I mean you get enjoyment out of all these little challenges and how you can you know you can fix them and make it all run smoothly and I think what, what you said was one of the most important things was um, um, about greed. I think that is the, the worst thing is to think that you're going to go into a business and just make so much money. And I think that is one of the things that um, um, set us apart because we were, we were the same price or cheaper than, you know, regular shops. And I mean, we are a regular shop, but it wasn't, um, we've always treated it fairly. Like I would rather, I would rather keep the prices as low as possible and feed more people instead of you know raise the prices and feed less people you might make the same amount of money it might be less work but there's a certain um it just doesn't feel right you know it's just i, I think being fair um will see you through yeah and i think you know the, the at the end of the day you know business businesses yes they're profit machines as some people would say but you know they're, they're also generators in my opinion generators of of happiness and especially, especially with restaurants you know you you are you know that that's the currency people need to walk out of that your place happy because if they're not going to you're not going to last very long you know so if you're not paying attention to those things you're not paying attention to the people side of it 
and you're just focused on you know how can we squeeze a little bit more margin out of this meal or maybe shrink the portion down a little bit you're not going to survive um and i think that's a, a super important point as well um so we're sort of coming to the end now um but i'd like to i'd like to sort of ask you one of the final questions i want to what is what's what's what if you was to give a key piece of advice to anyone who's sitting here now listening or watching and um, thinking i i want to do something like this i want to i want to start my own restaurant start my own food business food truck whatever it might be get into this um get into this industry what would be the sort of key piece of advice or if you maybe there's a couple of things that you want to mention what, what advice would you give to people that were in that position now perhaps they haven't started yet but they're really interested in doing it what would you say i would say pretty much what we just talked about is make sure you love whatever you're going to do you know whatever kind of business it is make sure that I feel like you almost um, you have to be hands on and own the own it you know whatever you do and yeah, yeah. you have to work it and you have to this is the only way you're going to find out how to make it work and to love it and I think it's, it's so important is um, to not make it a job you know but to make it a passion and keep that alive and that's I think one of the ways we keep it alive is by you know changing things around all the time you know and that keeps it you know that's maybe i'm just as i'm talking to you and thinking maybe that's it you know I, mean, oh, yeah, sure. I think it might be true but i think that way i think anybody who wants to start a business i think yeah you want you want to make a living but you know don't think about making a killing at first you know maybe I, when you become successful at what you do just do it and do it right and just respect everybody you respect your employees you respect your customers you treat them how you want to be treated and i think I think it'll be golden. You know, if you put out a good product and you treat everybody right, um, I think that you'll have no problem. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think really like you know one of the things that I think I want to highlight there is you know, the, the the money will come. I think with with any business, but you know the the real currency is the value that you're providing in the in the marketplace that that you're in. And I think that's that's a really important thing because if you're focused on making the money and I know we've kind of gone over this point a couple of times so I think it's a really really important one if you're if you're focused on money 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 how can I make more profit you know you, you naturally are going to move away from how can I make this better for my customers how can I make someone's day every day or you know all that stuff which if you do that then the money is is kind of a symptom of that behavior you know? it'll follow because what you yeah. want is you want those people coming through the door and, exactly. and the only way to get them to come, yeah the only way to get them to keep coming is to treat them right you know and i don't um we're not false in any way and it's just not like um um have a nice day what well, i do say that probably but i mean it's not just like it's not like when you're getting off a plane and it's like bye 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 you know it's just yeah, yeah. You, you really do care about everybody and you want to give them attention and so i mean it's you just have to thrive off of that and you have to want to treat people like that and I'm saying, even if you don't, you have to find people who will do that. If you can't do that, if that's not in you, you have to find somebody who will do that. And then that'll make you happy. And that'll... Another that'll great point there. Another great point. Because, some, yeah, that's an, when... In another lifetime, I used to work in the corporate world, um, God forbid. And um, I used to be told, always try, try, and, try and push yourself in the areas you're not strong at. Try and try and you know if you want to oh you want to go and stand up and do a presentation in front of a hundred people but you're not comfortable or you're not very good at it we'll try and do it anyway. Actually, I think you know as I've sort of moved on in my life, I've realised that actually that's not that's not really the best way to do it. No. Do the things that you love doing. Definitely put your put yourself out of your comfort zone. You know I would never say don't do that. But if you know that you're not very good at something, you'll never really have any interest in doing it in the long term. Find someone else who is good at it and hire them and get them to do it get them to help you and focus on the things that you're good at because everyone's got their little thing that they're good at you know some people are good with numbers some people are good with people some people are you know there's a whole host of different things you could be focused on but i think that's a really important thing so many people try to be like a jack of all trades and i think i think there's a real problem in in business in doing that in people pushing themselves into areas that actually they're not that very, that strong at and i think it's very important to understand in your heart like what what drives you? What makes you want to get up in the morning? You know, obviously for you, that is, you know, greeting the customers and talking to people and all that kind of stuff. Some people might hate the idea of that. 
and, and that's fine as well. But I think it's important to position yourself in a business where you're going to provide most value to that business and hire people around you, you know, that, that complement you in the areas that perhaps you're not so, so strong at. Exactly. I think that's a really, really important point. So we're coming to the end now. Um, before we close, I just wanted to ask you, what is next? the Grove and the Fish Bar. What other crazy dishes can we expect? And is there anything we can look out for? Um, let's see. You there's don't have some... to give away any secrets if you don't want to. No, 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 no. There's something, <laughs> there's something that, um, if you, in America, um, you go to any kind, wherever there's a fish restaurant, there's always, they always serve what's called hush puppies. I don't know if you know what those are. I do. Uh, yes, I do know what happens. Uh, yeah. And I think we need them. And we need them okay. big time. <laughs> wow. What, what kind, what, I mean, what kind of, tell me a little bit more. What's, what's going through your head? Okay. So, um, and that, I want to do like these hush puppies. They're, um, just tell for the, for the audience sake, just explain exactly what hush puppies are. Hush puppies, they're, um, it's like cornmeal with egg and some flour. And, you know, you just make a batter. It's a little bit of a runny batter. And you just throw them into the pan and they fry up. And it's sort of like um, what a corn dog, this, the, 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 the batter on a corn dog kind of is, you know? Yeah. And it's really popular in America. And what I want to do is, what we'll probably do is do those, but I want to do kind of like make it a little bit more of like a Mexican kind of with um, whole corn in it with jalapenos. Wow. And, and then maybe have some kind of a, um, we did, we do do, we had them on the menu for a while, for a little bit. They did really, really well, but I was never really happy with them because um, we had problems with people not wanting eggs and something. But, okay. but I think I have to just, I have to bite the bullet and go with the eggs. It's the same thing, like we, we the vegans hate us because we fry and beef dripping. And I wish I could. I, I did see that as well. And that, that's traditional, right? That's, I think. I mean, I, I feel bad. And if, if the shop was bigger, we'd have another pan that was just for vegetable. But you can't just have one pan out of the whole range be vegetable because everything drips back into it. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't deny stuff cooked in beef dripping just tastes better. No, I mean, it, it's like, <laughs> it, and you may not know, you may not know what it is. And you're like, wow, those chips are good. And then you go somewhere else, you go, those aren't so good. Why is it? It's that, it's that subtle taste. Yeah. You know, it's that extra little thing that's there that isn't in the other two. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, I'm rambling. Okay. So uh, a Mexican hush puppy twist. Yes. Uh, yeah. We'll be keeping our eye out for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the end of the interview. So Dwayne, thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, and you know, thank you as well to Christian for, for getting this organized. Um, and thanks everyone for listening and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks for listening to Bite Britain. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Bite Britain and also subscribe to us and watch the video version of this interview on YouTube so you can get updates on future releases and more importantly, exclusive opportunities to win prizes from our awesome guests.